Good evening. This is the pre-council meeting for the city of Joliet, Tuesday at 5.30 on August 14th. The, mayor, the Honorable Mayor Robert Odekirk presiding. We'll begin with roll call. Mayor Odekirk? Here. Councilman Dickinson? Here. Councilwoman Gavin? Here. Councilman Girl? Here. Councilman Hug? Here. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Mudrin? Here. Councilwoman Quillman? Here. Councilman Turk? Here. First, we have a presentation, Center for Economic Development, the Mid-Year Update by John Grueling. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Um, maybe that'll keep me from talking too much. Need some water? <laughs> um, I've got some, okay. thank you. So I appreciate the time this evening. Uh, beforehand, you were handed out uh, some uh, material from us. It's sort of our month-by-month uh, uh, -month book of activities and the uh, last year's annual report to our investors. Uh, and obviously you can look at that as you, at your leisure, but I've got a presentation tonight um, really to bring some focus to some of the things we're doing just not in the county, but in, in the city as well. So again, um, we are a private not-for-profit uh, economic development corporation. We're now in our 36th year. And our mission is uh, uh, pretty true. Uh, we haven't changed that uh, at all. We're focused on the retention and expansion of existing businesses, uh, recruiting new companies, uh, with the measuring stick being new jobs, investment, wealth, and uh, expanding the tax base. <clears throat> uh, the way we do that, uh, basically five areas. One is uh, finding real estate. Uh, most projects uh, are looking for uh, land or a building uh, if they're an existing company maybe they're looking to expand where they're at or maybe a new location new companies coming in obviously are looking for uh, new real estate and uh, we we have a very uh, deep database uh, both for the city and the county as a whole uh, whatever incentive programs are out there we try to package we promote ourselves as a one-stop shop and uh, in spite of the fact there's not much coming from the state right now uh, we are finding uh, our local municipalities, including uh, the city here, willing to step up and participate in a very proactive way uh, in uh, recruiting and retaining business. And I want to thank the, the city and, and Steve Jones and, and Marty and the others, and of course you, Mayor, for helping with uh, th that activity. It's very proactive, and Joliet and Joliet is seen as a very proactive city. Uh, government contacts, uh, we try to pave the way, show some guidance. Companies coming in here, maybe a little uncertain about the business climate in Illinois. Uh, we try to bring them uh, front and center with uh, local elected officials, letting them know what the, uh, the positive attitude is. Uh, information uh, drives site selection and business expansion these days. There's a lot of it out there. Uh, we subscribe to a lot of uh, databases, uh, and we can do customized studies uh, comparing taxes uh, location, business costs, etc., and then our lobbying activities in Springfield and Washington um, maybe sometimes don't work too well, but uh, we try to make sure our voice is heard. So, uh, so far this year, uh, this is uh, through July, we've uh, we've been uh, active with 57 uh, new business development projects, and they're in uh, all of our key sectors transportation, advanced manufacturing, logistics, food, food processing, energy, agribusiness, uh, information technology, and business services. Um, the business service section of our, uh, our program is actually uh, expanding. We're seeing a lot of uh, companies that are providing uh, direct business services to new and expanding businesses in the county. And uh, uh, the use of technology uh, is increasing as well certainly not only in our big companies, but in our smaller ones uh, as well. <clears throat> through, uh, through last month, uh, five projects in Joliet uh, that we uh, have some fingerprints on, Blue Ribbon Project products in uh, Rock Run, CDTI uh, out at uh, Centerpoint, uh, Odyssey Logistics, uh, again, out at Centerpoint, ITS kind of Global at Centerpoint, and then the Amazon Project uh, in Crest Hill, which uh, is their fifth facility in Will County. And when they're done uh, by the uh, Christmas season this year, 
they'll have somewhere between six and 7,000 employees in Will County, uh, considering they had zero uh, three and a half years ago. Um, it's a little disruptive, uh, but at the same time, uh, we see it as a very positive thing uh, overall. Uh, their wages and benefits uh, are bringing up uh, the compensation floor and the benefit floor for a lot of our entry-level jobs in the county. There's not too many $9, $10 jobs out there anymore, uh, which is a positive thing. Um, we are about to release our Will County Community Freight, um, Community Friendly Freight Mobility Study uh, in partnership with the county. Uh, we were able to cobble together just about a million dollars uh, in grant funds from the state and the feds. Uh, we hired a, a consultant to uh, uh, lead the project and uh, we'll be uh, releasing uh, uh, the, uh, the formal document next month. Uh, we've gone through a number of uh, drafts and uh, it's pretty exciting, uh, some of the findings in that study. Uh, we look not only at the current state of freight in the county, uh, where is it coming from, where is it going to, uh, we learned a lot about that. We found out that 63% of the freight in Will County is just passing through the county. 63% uh, of the trucks we see in Will County every day are simply uh, using us as a byway. Uh, and I, I've been using this example, if they took away all the distribution centers in Will County, we would still have about 63% of the truck traffic on our roads, uh, mostly on the interstates, but still that, that kind of indicates how significant we are to the national economy. And uh, uh, we're also looking at the workforce situation for the transportation logistics industry, uh, as well as uh, providing some guidance to communities that are dealing with uh, this particular sector as it continues to grow. And, and uh, we see the plan as a, as a tool for communities to help them uh, evaluate these projects, understand what the impacts are, and then eventually make some good decisions about uh, providing the entitlements and the approvals uh, for more, uh, more of this industry. Uh, at, the, at the base of the entire study, the core of the study is to provide us uh, information that we can compete for federal dollars that are set aside for freight projects every year. And uh, we'll be uh, identifying a project to be submitted for this round's funding, which is uh, due in November. Uh, we've hired Doug Pryor. Uh, I don't know if you know, have met Doug. Uh, Doug is our new Vice President of Economic Development. Uh, our business activity has uh, been extremely active, as you know, this last five years. Uh, and uh, we also see uh, our need to assist our municipalities uh, expanding. Uh, it's one of the jobs that, uh, uh, that Doug is uh, going to be responsible for, doing outreach with local communities, providing assistance and guidance whenever we can. We don't want to get in the way. We just want to make deals happen. Uh, and uh, Doug comes to us uh, immediately uh, as the uh, county administrator in Grundy County. And before that, he worked for the uh, Grundy Economic Development Council. Uh, good pedigree. And uh, so far, so good. He keeps showing up every day, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, we held our 10th annual Global Logistics Summit in April, very successful. Uh, we had uh, some great speakers. Our eye opener uh, was held in June. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we hosted local elected officials for a, what we call an economic development boot camp. Uh, we did this last year. Uh, we had a lot of success with it. Uh, we invited local municipal leaders and appointed officials uh, that maybe need a little uh, uh, more information on, on uh, community economic development programs, uh, what needs to go in those programs, how do you think strategically when you want to recruit and retain business. And uh, Pat Mudron was, was at the session. I appreciate the city being, being present. Uh, it was a good session. We'll, we'll do more of this in the, in the coming months and years. Uh, we retain our membership on the State Freight Advisory Council. Uh, we, in fact, uh, have a seat on the executive committee. And uh, much like our freight plan, uh, that will provide guidance to the state on prioritizing projects for investment. And it's important that we're at that table. Uh, we've been participating with uh, the County Executive Walsh on the Chicago Regional Growth Initiative. This is an, uh, an initiative that 15 years ago I would never have thought possible in Chicago. Uh, it's seven counties, the seven northeastern counties of Illinois working together 
on identifying uh, our strengths and opportunities in economic development and we're actually looking at <coughs> collaborating uh, and cooperating on marketing, on uh, foreign direct investment, on exports, uh, and we're in the process of creating a not-for-profit regional development corporation uh, that would be fully staffed, uh, that we could take advantage of. And uh, even though we'll still be competing for projects with our other sister counties uh, in the city of Chicago, uh, I think putting a, a regional spin on what we have to offer uh, really extends our reach and uh, our importance as a logistics center for the region uh, definitely comes into play in that. Um, uh, we also uh, are seeing uh, our financial situation remain very strong. Uh, as far as the city is concerned, uh, we retain our board seat on the city center partnership. Uh, we're working uh, with federal, state, and local authorities on needed infrastructure projects looking at uh, new ways of funding these massive uh, infrastructure projects. I've uh, been uh, uh, a happy participant with the Hobolt Parkway extension. As that moves forward, we're very excited about that. Uh, as we were going through our, our uh, uh, logistics plan, we, we received a lot of positive feedback from the industry about that, that bridge, <laughs> the Parkway extension. And I think the numbers in terms of projected utilization of that reflect that. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we continue to pound away at the Olean Expressway. We think that's an important project that we can't let the state forget about. Um, if you, again, look at that number of 63% of the traffic just passing through, we think about a third of that uh, could be taken off I-80 on a daily basis and they would use the Olean Expressway. Uh, again, another reason why we're doing this plan to demonstrate that we've, we've got this need. Uh, uh, some specific projects all of you are familiar with, uh, Rock Run Crossings, uh, the, uh, the Cullinan Project, uh, the present St. Joseph Medical Center, a TIF district on the west side, uh, met with the uh, uh, pr uh, president of the uh, uh, hospital a couple of weeks ago, and looking forward to uh, marketing uh, that area for not just medical uses, but other uses as well. Uh, some initial meetings with Silver Cross on the reutilization of their campus on the east side. I think, uh, you know, this, the, the hospital is definitely interested in moving that along, and I think uh, it offers a tremendous redevelopment opportunity uh, for the city. And then the implementation of the downtown plan. Uh, quickly, uh, some good news. Uh, you know, we continue to move along with uh, our unemployment rate. It went up in, uh, in June, uh, but we see that uh, as an indicator of more people coming into the uh, workforce. Uh, we have become something of a job center, averaging between six and 8,000 new jobs a year in the county. So uh, that gives uh, hope to folks that maybe have been sitting on the sidelines, haven't been in the workforce for a while, and are now re-entering it. Uh, and uh, your, your unemployment rate is uh, at a nice 6.5%. Uh, 2013, it was as high as 14.6%. So uh, a lot of progress on the job creation front in, uh, in Joliet. Uh, median household income, we've got a great market. Uh, job growth and housing is uh, beginning to pick up. This is a good indicator of, of how we uh, fare with uh, some of our competition. In terms of employment change between 2012 and 2017, uh, we've seen a 13% increase in, in jobs uh, compared to 6% in Cook County, and they're going down. Uh, DuPage, 8%, uh, Illinois, 5 and the nation, 8%. Uh, so we are a bit of a beacon as far as job creation is concerned. This is our current list of major employers in the county. Uh, again, Amazon uh, bolted to the top. A number of these, as you know, have a presence in uh, Joliet. And uh, we uh, are very, uh, you know, as you can see, we're very diversified in our major employers, which again is a very good thing. Uh, new business developments, I uh, talked about some of these. Blue Ribbon Products, Kellogg's, uh, Cap Barbell, their, their manufacturing expansion, CDTI, ITS, Con Global. Uh, some other projects, uh, this is all since the first of the year. Uh, in Will County, we continue to uh, uh, do very well on uh, both industrial, food, healthcare, uh, and some manufacturing, uh, which is pretty exciting. 
we actually saw a 1% increase in our manufacturing jobs in 2016, which is, uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but quite frankly, in the state of Illinois, that's, that's uh, uh, quite remarkable. Uh, and we're, uh, we're glad to be at least holding our own as far as that is concerned. Uh, this is an interesting uh, piece of information uh, we put together. Uh, you know, one of the things that maybe we forget about is uh, how reliant this county was on housing in the last decade. So if you look at uh, the years between 1997, this is the county numbers, uh, between 1997 and 2007, there were 71,683 single family building permits issued, uh, some 38, 3,900 multifamily. Uh, in the 10 years since then, uh, 8,191 uh, with uh, a little over 1,400 of multifamily. Um, what this tells us is a big, a big sector of our economy has not recovered. And if you look at the jobs, uh, the building trades, the home stores, the labor, uh, the, the lumber yards, uh, all of the suppliers to the housing industry uh, were not operating anywhere near that we were in the prior 10 years. Uh, I put together a similar chart for uh, Joliet. And again, between 1997 and 2007, there were 17,213 single family homes built. And in the last 10 years, uh, 1,116. Um, again, this is uh, the reality that, that we uh, live in right now. Uh, what I find interesting is uh, in, in neither scenario, there's, been a, there's not been a lot of multifamily housing built in the county. And uh, one of the trends that we're seeing among younger uh, workers, uh, the so-called millennials, uh, they're not buying houses, they're looking at rental properties. Uh, and I think, you know, that's an area that a lot of our communities in Will County, we think, should uh, take a closer look at in, in terms of meeting their housing needs. And uh, so there's, if there's anything we can do to help with that, we're certainly interested in that. So the balance of the year, uh, as I said earlier, we'll be releasing the, uh, the freight mobility plan. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned to the mayor on Friday, we'll want to give a presentation to the city council here in the coming months. Uh, the economic report on real estate is October 5th at Lewis University. Uh, we're relaunching our Will County Business Retention Survey Program, and we'll want to get with uh, Steve and Kendall and, and uh, talk to them about uh, some companies that we can visit uh, with the city in terms of uh, finding out how they're doing. Uh, and then our annual report to investors uh, in <coughs> December, and that's our flyer for the 5th. Uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> Glad to answer any questions. You, know, you can say all you want to say. <laughs> no, thank you, John. A um, couple of things. You know, I'm on the executive board, so I, I work with you on a close basis. I right. see what a great job you're doing, so thank you. Thank you. I do want to compliment you for the freight mobility study, just so we're clear. On one hand, we're going to educate ourselves about what's actually happening with the freight in Will County and through Joliet, but we're also looking at that if there ever is a capital improvement bill that comes out of Washington, right. we're going to have something in place that we can point to to try to leverage money for the city or for Will County. So I think it's really great forward thinking. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. Well, it, it uh, took all of us to do it, but I'm, I'm glad we're where we're at today with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, quick question there. Hi, John. Thanks for coming. Sure. Hey, you had mentioned there's no more, you know, very little $9 an hour jobs out there. We're really moving up the floor. Right. Have we done a wage study, our CED? Have, no, have... no. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, outcomes of the uh, logistics study will be to one of the, uh, the next activities will be to uh, compensation wage and salary survey. And you think maybe they'll break it down like you, you mentioned entry level? <clears throat> what categories might be entry level, middle yeah. level? And now, 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 to be perfectly frank, one of the things that w the study has shown is that uh, in that industry sector, transportation, distribution, logistics, uh, now some of this is pre-Amazon, but uh, we still are lagging in terms of wages compared to some of the, our sister uh, counties in, in the region. So we think that's important information to understand. And we hope to uh, uh, create some uh, energy among the uh, logistics companies to start talking about, you know, how do we, how do we improve uh, not only wages, but uh, the jobs themselves looking at new technologies uh, as, this, as this sector continues to expand. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, John, do you want to comment on uh, the meeting you were at this morning and trying to capture the employees from Will County that are leaving? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a feature of um, a, a number of things. You know, we have a, a lot of people live in Will County that don't work here. And if you look at the... Uh, the footprint or the, the, the head count of all of the individuals that live in the county that rely on an industry that has a heavy reliance on transportation. It's not just logistics jobs, but it's retail, it's, it's uh, uh, petrochemical, it's the pipelines, um, it's, it's the agri-industry. There's about 100,000 people uh, that work in the transportation-reliant industry sectors. And about 55,000 of those leave the county every day for their job. And uh, now on the flip side, we have about 36,000 coming into the county to work in those industry sectors. And there's about 25,000 uh, that are that live in Will County and work in Will County. Uh, so uh, the angle here is to look at how do we retain uh, Will County uh, workers um, that live here and bring them into some of the uh, the job openings that these new companies are, are creating. Uh, and I think it's going to be a factor, uh, Pat, as we talked this morning of uh, wage improvement. And, you know, if you work in uh, Bedford Park or South Chicago uh, and you've probably had that job maybe 15 or 20 years, you're probably making $20, $25, $30 an hour. And uh, to start in a logistics job in Will County, uh, you know, you're going to be half of that. Uh, so it's going to take some time, I think, to make this adjustment. Uh, but the good news is we're creating the jobs, and I think we'll see a lot of opportunity for our, our local people. One question. Yes. <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, I noticed in your presentation you had Silver Oaks Hospital New Lenox. Is that a derivative of Silver Cross, or is that something new? Silver Oaks Hospital is the uh, mental health uh, hospital that's being built on the uh, Silver on Cross campus. On the west campus. side of the hospital? Yes. Itself. Yeah. And do they currently have any uh, ideas about the redevelopment of the property of the old hospital? Uh, there's there's some ideas, but uh, nothing, no. I, we're in the very early stages of just looking at the market. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. <coughs> Next, we have a presentation on turf replacement for the Joliet Baseball Stadium. Okay, Mayor and Council. Um, the Department of Public Works in the spring was charged with uh, looking at revising our stadium, putting it on artificial surface for more usability, obviously for different, maybe different activities, different sports, potentially concerts, what have you. Um, so we took, it, we took that, ran with it. Uh, we hired a consultant, White and & Associates, and that was back in early May. We hired them, came on board. They've been working on doing the design work. Um, we're at a point now where we're actually uh, advertising uh, construction bids tomorrow. Uh, there'll be about seven different contracts we're gonna put out. This will be a little bit different form than we normally do. Uh, we normally hire a general contractor. We will, at this project, we're gonna try to expedite the contract. Uh, the project we're going to use white and associates as the construction manager um, so a little bit different little different scenario this time um, we plan on doing most of this work as, as we can if we can this fall if we get stuck with the uh, with weather or what have you we may have to finish it off in the spring but uh, that being said i have uh byron wins is here he's going to come up he's from white and associates he's going to go over the project in a little more detail with everyone as i said because we are now actually Tomorrow we'll be on the street with uh, with our contracts, and we plan on coming to the September fifth meeting to award contracts. Okay, Byron. Mayor, Council, um, thanks for the opportunity to come here and present the project. It is this is an exciting project for us. We these are our fun jobs doing these sports fields. Don't get a lot of thanks for our parking lots, but these sports fields are pretty nice. So. Um, as you know, you're already familiar with your existing facility. It's a natural turf field, clay infield with a warning track. It's got a wood fence uh, attached to existing metal fencing in that. Um, kind of elevated the uh, left field area, and that's part of the project that we'll be showing you here shortly. 
Um, what we did is, since we were tasked to bring in multi-sports here, uh, we, we did have to make some modifications to your field. So we are trying to accommodate uh, soccer and men's and women's lacrosse here. Uh, so we did have to move the left field fence out a little bit. So that means we will be taking down an existing retaining wall out there to move the fence further uh, deeper into uh, left field. Um, so we will be able to accommodate multi-sports here. Um, here's kind of the look of what the field will be. We're, we're only permanently striping baseball only. We'll be putting tick marks out in the field to accommodate uh, temporary striping for the other sports. Um, we left the soccer field in here just to give you an idea of, of the size of what we had to do to accommodate uh, the multi-sports here. Uh, this will be all synthetic turf. Uh, there will be no clay out there at all. We'll, we will have portable mounds for both the dugouts, or I mean for the bullpens and for the main mound. So those can be taken out and you could accommodate softball also as another sport that we would be able to accommodate here and any other activities like concerts and that type of stuff. Um, this is just kind of a brief plan of what we did. Um, here we are removing all the existing um, turf out there and the existing ground, plus the irrigation system. We will be coming in with an all new um, aggregate base and under drain system to improve the drainage out there, uh, and then covering that up with synthetic turf. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the turf because it's kind of the main thing. Uh, since this is primary use is for baseball, we're, we will be using a slit film uh, that's usually used for baseball. Uh, what it does, it will lay over, kind of contain the crumb rubber infill, and that keeps the splash coming out. So when a ground ball comes in in front of a player, they won't get the splash, won't get the stuff in their eyes. So we, we do use this for baseball, and it can accommodate all the other sports also. Um, <clears throat> we are proposing the Classic HD um, field turf product um, or approved equals, but uh, this is the product we went through at the base. It does have a patented infill, so it is a uh, silica sand base uh, with a crumb rubber um, second layer, which is crumb rubber and silica sand, and then it's topped off with the crumb rubber. Uh, we will have an alternate for cool play, and what cool play is, it's, it's that top layer. Um, it is a um, I know they're referencing an extruded cork here, but there is a version three out there now, which is what we're using. And it is a, an extruded composite, mineral composite, um, which will, if it's selected as an alternate, uh, what it does is it, it adds cooling to the field. So these fields during the summer months can get pretty warm, uh, anywhere up there 130 degrees. Uh, the cool play will reduce the temperature down to 20 to 30 degrees just in itself for summer programs. So it's, it's a nice feature that we have been utilizing on fields now these days up here in the north. It's used in the south all the time. They've been having it for a while, but it's a little bit new up here. Um, so <coughs> that's, that's the fiber. Uh, the cost for the project, as we started looking into everything we're doing there, because we are removing the existing outfield fence, uh, we are replacing all the wood. We are reusing as much of the uh, outfield fence that we can. I'm talking about the structural supports, but we are replacing all the wood. Uh, we are proposing to put pads back on the field, and that's our recommendation, because since we are getting rid of the warning track system out there, even though we show it as a fiber, it's all the same thing, so you don't have the noise. So we're looking to put pads on the outfield fence from a safety feature. Uh, because now it's only a visual thing and you won't have the same sound effect, so to speak, that the players are used to. Um, here again, this includes all the fence, carpet, includes all the earthwork, excavation, you know, new fence, pads, and all the drainage improvements that we're doing out to the field. So this is the, this is the range we're looking at and with the alternate for cool play being below the line there. Uh, based on the schedule that we discussed with the, uh, with the city, uh, here again, uh, we do have the bid documents are available and we'll be out on the street here this week. Um, so we are looking for a bid opening at the end of August uh, with bid reviews and then recommendations coming to the council at 9-5 to award that. We are looking to start construction September 19th or earlier if they don't make the playoffs. So, you know, sooner we can get out there, the better we like it. So. Um, our goal is to have substantially complete by the end of November. So our goal is really to get the carpet in. That's, that's what we want to get in. If we can get the carpet in, we could always take care of loose ends past the date, but we have a, 
with the weather and that there's only certain things we can do with the carpet as it starts to get too cold. So our goal is to get that installed by the end of November. And we feel we can, we can do that. We've done a lot of these fields, uh, both design and built for our school clients. So we always work in small windows during the summer from June through August. And we've been, we've been able to get those fields done. So we feel pretty comfortable we can make this happen. But if the weather does not permit us to finish, we are looking to come back in and get everything wrapped up before the season starts in March. So if there's any questions, I can. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming down. Very exciting project here. I know we're all excited about it here on the council. <laughs> but uh, what is the useful life of, of this type of turf? All right, well, uh, for, you know, we call it carpet, and we call it carpet for a reason. Uh, but <clears throat> the warranty period is a, it's an eight-year warranty on the carpet. What we're seeing for most of the fields is probably closer to about 11 or 12 years. And here again, it depends on the use. So the more it's used, the quicker it can wear out, but the warranty is eight years. We're seeing closer to 11 or 12 years easily on these fields, depending on the usage. Okay, thank you. Just very quickly. Now, there were some issues years ago about the mound being portable mound. It wouldn't be as stable or it wouldn't be as good. Has that improved over the years? Yes, uh, you know, actually I can kind of show you the mound we're proposing. Um, You know, there's there's the portable mound. They they actually come in pieces. They're 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 actually quite heavy, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, they will have the fiber will be attached to it. You know that that we're using, and we're using portable mounds also for the bullpen. So, not quite the same. Maybe it's slightly a little bit different because they're bullpen mounds. But the, this would be the, it comes in pieces and it gets assembled quite heavy. They're pretty <coughs> short right now. And uh, one more thing: uh, is this turf? the same or similar to what's out at the uh, Park District Stadium? Yeah, it'd be similar. I don't know exactly which, the, what turf you have out there, but they're, they're all- It looks the same. I yeah, it's all know. somewhat similar. It is a slit film. I'm not sure if you have that or if you have the amount of filament out there, but uh, here again, because the primary use is for baseball, that's why we use the slit film because what will happen is this slit film over time, the top kind of curls over and then it encapsulates the crumb rubber and that's what keeps that splash from coming up. Um, so we like that for the baseball and that's primarily what you'd use for a baseball field. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, um, I, th does the uh, estimate include uh, any equipment that would be necessary for the upkeep? Yes, um, it, the, the grooming equipment and that will be included as part of the contract. The portable mounds are part of that also. Um, so you will, the, the, the sweeper, uh, the groomer and that will come as part of the project that will be included in the contractor's price <clears throat> and it will be included. Uh, what you'll need is a gator or something to pull it. It's more of a trailer type unit. It gets pulled behind the unit. So the only thing you'd need is like a gator or uh, you know, like an, an ATV type vehicle that can pull it. Very common, so. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. How do you handle the uh, batter's box where you're going to have a person standing in the... Yeah, um, as, as part of our specifications, and, and uh, you know, there are, and I'll talk about that here. Uh, the maintenance, is, it's really ongoing maintenance all the time for the high wear areas. Batter's boxes, pitcher's mound, first bases, they get used a lot, so they need to be groomed quite regularly, even during the game and between periods. Um, in our specifications, though, we are including replacements for high wear areas. Batter's box, pitcher's mounds, uh, bullpens, first, second, and third base. Uh, so they, they'll be required to come back three times to install that and replace that for you because those will wear out <coughs> much quicker. So that is included in their price that they will need to come back up to three times based on the timing when you need to have that done. But there is grooming that's gonna be done. There is maintenance uh, because of baseball. It's a, it's, a, it's a different type of use than football. So a little more hand grooming, not necessarily with the machine or, or pulling around. It's really a grounds guy coming in, raking and grooming it and, and, and replacing the infill accordingly. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> hey, thank you. I had one other question, but it wouldn't be for, for this gentleman. It'd be probably for Marty or somebody on staff. Could you just give a brief Good, thank you. Yep. explanation of how we're financing this again? It's through the SSA, right? It's through uh, the TIF. Or the TIF, I'm yeah. sorry. So this could, you know, over 10 years. I mean, how long, you know, they, they said expect a life of 10 to 12 years. Yeah, you know what? I don't have the exact time frame, but there is a, it is over an extended period of time. Excess citizens to be heard on agenda items. 
Is there anyone present that would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? Seeing none, we'll pass it over to the interim city manager to discuss tomorrow night's agenda items. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna run through the agenda for tomorrow. CTIS, economic development, finance, public service, and the newly rebranded stadium committees will all provide the reports. There are four items on the consent agenda, and I wanna bring your attention to one of them. First, approval of minutes, second, invoice paid, and the third one is Council Memo 436-17, the 2018 Roadway Reconstruction Program. This item proposes to include 1.2 million in motor fuel tax funds into the 2018 budget for reconstruction of roadways. This is Smith Ave, Juniper Street, Noel Ave, Charity Ave, Redicourt, and Richmond Street. And then uh, also there will be a provision for South Hebbard Street. And then there's a council memo 43717 position vacancies job descriptions. There are three items on the for the liquor license. The first one, council memo 439-17 for a class B at 2007 Essington Road. There's a request that this one be tabled. And then for the other two, I'll ask the deputy liquor commissioner to speak. Mayor, city council. Uh, council member 440-17, a public hearing was held on July 26, 2017 at 10 a.m. for a request of a Class E license. The applicant is Joliet 55 Lodging Associates, LLC, DBA Home Two Suites. The location is 4095 Hennepin Drive. No persons appeared in opposition. There are no outstanding monies owed to the city. The police, fire, and building department have no issues. The building department needs to do a final inspection after the project is completed. Based on the facts and the facts of this hearing, the liquor commissioner is recommending approval. Second is council member 441-17. A public hearing was held on July 26, 2017 at 11 a.m. for a request for a transfer of a B license. The applicant is Premier Events and Banquets Inc. or is Maura Williams. That's DBA, the Renaissance Center. Location is 214 North Ottawa Street. No persons appeared in opposition. There are no outstanding monies owed to the city. The police, fire, and building department have no issues. Based on the facts and the facts of the hearing, the liquor commissioner is recommending approval. Any questions? Quick question there. Yeah. You know, for the hotel, is that going to be like a restaurant bar? I don't know exactly yet. We, I haven't seen the plans, to be honest with you. I think it might just be one of the fridges, like, to help yourself and pay for a beer at the counter. Right. Or um, what do you Could call be it? A, when it? Room service. Yeah, room service type thing, yes. Mm -hmm. There's somebody raising their hand, maybe. Yep. You might know better. Yes, it will be just a fridge. Hello, my name is Scott Jacob, and I'll be the general manager of that property. Uh, it will just be a standalone fridge that we will sell at the front desk uh, for the business hours of the hotel. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. In our public hearings are two. First one, Council Memo 443-17, approving an annexation of four acres located at 2121 South Chicago Street. There's a request to table this to 919 of 17. This is something that has actually appeared before on the agenda. This is at the corner of Emerald and Route 53. The city has almost concluded negotiations, which we hope to wrap up very soon. Second is Council Memo 444-17, ordinances resolution approving annexation of 9.3 acres along Des Plaines River, located at 1731 to 1751 Patterson Road, classification to I-2 zoning and approval of an annexation agreement. The petitioner, Joliet Bulk Barge and Rail LLC, is requesting annexation of 9.3 acres along Des Plaines River. The approval will allow the continuation of a barge loading and unloading operation and potential future expansion. Under ordinances and resolutions, ordinances, Council Memo 446-17, ordinance approving vacating 24 
foot by 138.3 feet portion of an existing alley south of 1206 Arthur Avenue. The petitioner wishes to have vacated a portion of an existing alley south of their residence. Public Works does not oppose subject to a public utility and drainage easement and no one appeared in opposition at the plan commission meeting. Council memo 444-17 ordinances for the levy and assessment of taxes for 2013 special service areas, neighborhood improvement program. The 2013 costs are known. The improvements were for Cottage Place, West Park to Wheeler and Jasper Street Millborough to Wheeler. <coughs> Under resolutions, Council Memo 449-17, resolution <coughs> accepting and placing on file the jo Joliet Historic Preservation Commission annual report for 2016. As part of the city's responsibilities as a certified local government, an annual report of the Joliet Historic Preservation Commission activities must be prepared and placed on file with the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency. Council Memo 450-17, resolution conveying property at 319 South Midland to Will County Habitat for, Habitat for Humanity. The city acquired the property and demolished a structure in 2010. Since then, the property has remained vacant. So conveying the property to Habitat for Humanity, they are going to construct a house. Council Memo 451-17, resolution appro approving, appropriating funds for Collins Street Streetlight Improvement Program Segment 1. Illinois requires a resolution since funding will come from motor fuel tax funds. Council Memo 452-17, a resolution authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with the Board of Education of Laraway CCSD 70C regarding improvements to Raul Ave. Dr. Salmeri has a conflict and wasn't able to attend tonight and he had his board meeting tomorrow at the same time so he's not going to be here tomorrow either but, but he just wanted me to express that to you that he, he otherwise he would be here so just to give you the background on this <coughs> district 70c agreed to construct roadway improvements on Raul Ave across from its proposed new school and in addition to that roadway improvements adjacent to the comet and NICOR rights away which is just south of the proposed school. The city is constructing roadway improvements to Raul Ave south of the Comet and Nicor rights away. So the intergovernmental agreement essentially is that the city is agreeing to construct the roadway improvements on Raul Ave adjacent to the Comet and Nicor rights away and District 70C has agreed to pay, pay for the improvements. So essentially they've agreed to construct them but instead we're going to construct them, they're going to pay for them the estimated cost is 84,000 with a not to exceed figure of 92,400. Just to be clear, Marty, we're yes. a pass through. We're a pass through, yes. <coughs> Thank you. Not a legal ease for just that. <laughs> Council Memo 453 17, <coughs> resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a collective bargaining agreement with Illinois Fraternal Order of Police Labor Council and Joliet Police Supervisors Association for 2016 to 2019. Under bids and contracts, these items and award of contracts, change orders, these items were reviewed earlier by public service. We'll report on any issues tomorrow. And there is a request for executive session. First, we have public comments. Is there anyone like to speak under public comments this evening? Seeing none, is there a motion to go into closed session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, land acquisition, or conveyance pending or threatened litigation after which the meeting will be adjourned? So, so second. Second. So motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Girl? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Motion carried.